I can solve GitHub issues with Google Gemini 1.5 Pro. Everyone seems to be super impressed with Devin, supposedly the world's first software engineer. And one of the important benchmarks that Devin used is this one. This is a real world software engineering performance. And they said percentage of GitHub issues resolved by Devin. I can solve GitHub issues with Google Gemini 1.5 Pro. If you have got 1.5 Pro access, you should be able to pretty much replicate everything that I'm showing on this particular video. I'm going to take this entire repo from Ollama and I'm going to ask Gemini Pro to solve GitHub issues for me. First, I'm going to pick easier issues like this. During the course of the video, we'll also see if it can solve slightly more complicated issues than simple issues. Let me quickly show you a demo. So this is a new GitHub issue that was opened just yesterday. And the issue is how can I uninstall Olama from my Ubuntu WS? So I'm going to take this, just simply go here and I'm going to go put here that the same thing. So I've just literally pasted the same thing here. I said solve the following GitHub issue. Guys, how can I uninstall Olama from my Ubuntu WSL? And then it goes on giving me the answer. Okay, it says first stop it, then disable it. And then it says that I have to remove the file path where Olama is there, which is exactly what is in the documentation. And this literally solves this particular GitHub issue. So successfully one out of one, we have managed to solve using Google Gemini 1.5 Pro. How have we reached here? That's one something that I wanted to share. So what I have done is, I have gone ahead and then downloaded the entire Olama folder. Thankfully, this is an MIT license, so I'm not violating any copyrights in this particular case. So I downloaded the entire repo, the entire repo. So the way you download a repo is not very difficult. You can either git clone it and get it to your local machine, or you can go here and then download the zip file. So after I downloaded this zip file, I unzipped it and I got the entire folder here. This is the total folder of Olama and it has got documentation, it has got the source code, it has got examples, it has basically got everything that you need to understand Olama. Now Google Gemini 1.5 Pro comes with 1 million tokens context window. As you can see here, I out of 1 million tokens context window, I've already used up close to 300,000. That is because the first thing that I did here is I uploaded the entire Olama file. So I downloaded the Olama folder, the repo, unzipped it, and I uploaded the entire Olama folder to Google AI Studio, which is now powered by Gemini 1.5 Pro. And with, after I do this, now is the time I can go ahead and ask any question. I can start with a very simple question and I can go with complicated question. So let's start with a very simple question. For brevity, I will edit the response time. So the response time might be longer based on the tokens that you have got, but uh, I'm not going to show you the entire time that you have to wait, but you can understand that it will take a little bit of time for it to run. So the first question is give how to use Olama for running an running an LLM, maybe simple question. Let's see how to use Olama for running an LLM. It's a very poorly formed question, but as you can see here, the question is sent to this particular system and the chat, this particular session has got knowledge about Olama source code, which has got the source code and also the documentation. So it is going to take the documentation and the source code, and it is ultimately going to give me an answer, which will evaluate whether it is the right answer or not comparing the documentation or all the other things. Meanwhile, I can go to the documentation here and then see if they have got any example here. So you can see there is a Linux example. You can see there is a readme.md. Uh, so there is a quick start. You can quick see quick start and how to start Olama. So download the model like this, and then you can just run the model. Now, when we go to our Google AI studio, it is uh, guiding us. So the question is how to use Olama for running an LLM. It says, okay, first install Olama, then you pull the model and then you run the model and then you ask the question. This is 100% the right way to run Olama. In fact, it goes on and gives me a couple of options. One is the CLI option, the interactive mode option, the APA option, and then it gives me the path. In fact, like, okay, you want model options? Go click here. I'm clicking the file. Hopefully it's not hallucinated. It's not hallucinated. And I have got the entire model file. If I want to customize the LLM with, let's say system prompt with my own temperature value, with my own uh, hyper parameters for the LLM. 
which also works 100% completely. And it also says GPU acceleration. If you have compatible NVIDIA GPU, Olama can leverage it for faster inference. Ensure you have the necessary CUDA drivers and configuration. So the first test, very simple code, it successfully gave. Now the second thing that I want to do is, I'm going to go pick one of the GitHub issues. I'm going to go click issues here. And uh, I'm going to start with very simple questions. So I'm going to select the question tag. And inside the question tag, I'm going to uh, I'm going to find a question. So let's let's pick a question here, which is maybe just easy to read. So here, integrated GPU support. It says integrated GPU support, and what is the answer? The answer goes on back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I'm not picking up this kind of an issue because uh, it might be little difficult for us to validate whether it will work or it will not work. So let's pick one more issue here. So it says, okay, there is no way to disable this in the REPL. Although if you want to clear out the current context, you can use load model. Okay, some, some issue is there. So I'm going to go take this question, right? And I'm going to come back here and then ask this question. Here is a GitHub issue on Olama repo. Help me solve it. Paste the solution, send it. At this point, the entire text goes, I'm not putting a lot of effort in formatting and the text is sent there. So I'm going to go back and then just read it for my understanding. Okay, I want to understand how does the conversational history is fed back into the template from the model file. Here is the model file. I'm able to do conversational question and answering on the terminal, but I'm not sure how does the template take care of the history. So the answer here is there's, there is no way to disable this in the REPL. On the contrary, how do I disable such behavior? I want to run a fine tuned model with just answer based on the question. I don't want it to get influenced by the previous question. So right now there is no way to clear out and you can just use load model. It says you can use a fresh load model to load the fine tuned model that you have got. And uh, if you want to load the model again, it will remain in the memory and it won't be reloaded and it will make the model forget anything from before. So this is the only option. Let's see if Google AI studio can figure out. So it gives a solution. I don't think it has figured out. Okay, con uh, feedback, okay, it explains how the conversation is fled black. Okay, cool. It says, okay, disabling the history influence. It says you can reduce the number of context parameter uh, that can reduce. I don't think that is valid. It says you can clear the context in the terminal, use the command set context, okay, to reset the context. I'm not sure how 100% right it is, but um, will it work? Uh, I'm not sure, like you can set the context and reset. If you want to completely isolate the question from previous interactions, you can manually clear the context before each new question. In the terminal, you can use this and then do this. Cool. Uh, I don't know. Honestly, I don't know if it will work. If you think it will work, let me know in the comment section. But um, it somehow gave me the answer. Let's pick the next GitHub issue, which in this case, the title is response format not supported. When sending this request to open a endpoint, I don't get the requested JSON. And the answer to this is, it looks like you may be sending a response a schematic in the response format. This is not supported by Olama currently, only format JSON is supported. Okay, so that is the solution. And somebody else came and gave one more solution that we have got. Uh, there is a workaround. Let's use the same thing. And I've given the same question here. As you can see here, I pasted the entire thing. And then it kind of gives me the response back. Once again, the response is slightly more verbose. Maybe we can control that by giving a condition there. One of the answers, which is exactly what the GitHub answer here is, is the format JSON. And as you can see here, it says correct format parameter. Double check the format parameter in your API request is set to JSON. This is essential for requesting JSON output. And it also gives me the example code with the same thing that I can send and get the exact same format, which is JSON. Not validating the last one, but this kind of um, explains how to do it and 100% solves the issue. So let's pick one more GitHub issue here, which is, and let's pick one of the closed ones because it's, we know that it has got a solution. Build CUDA ready Docker image. Um, let's see if it works. Currently the official Olama image container does not contain necessary CUDA libraries. This is inconvenient. And um, there is, I see you have provided rock M images for AMD GPUs. Can you provide CUDA ready images if that's not feasible? How about providing a specific Docker file? I'm using Olama container this one and CUDA libraries are there. Let's see if uh, Google can figure out the answer and then give us. Let's ask the same question. Currently, 
the official container image does not contain CUDA libraries. Send the same question. Let's see what it gives back. I've got the response back. It says, okay, it agrees that it is not possible. And it gives me an option to create a Docker file, which is take from the OLMS current image and then install the CUDA libraries, whatever that is required, build the image, run the image. And there is a second option. It says we can use NVIDIA's container toolkit. Let me click this and then see if it works actually. Oh, obviously the link works. It's not hallucinated link. And then we have the response back. Once again, I'm not sure if it works, but it looks compellingly correct. So, so far we have tried a bunch of easy issues. And uh, in many cases, I found the response is really good. Like I can, I can see that it is a good response. Now, what we are going to do is instead of taking a question, which is the question labeled GitHub issue, let's take one of the issues which is, uh, let's say like a request or something like that. So I'm going to go here and then pick one of the feature requests. So open RC in its support. So it says could be really nice if the installation script had auto detect feature to identify the current RAN in its system on the Linux machine. I'm going to paste the entire thing and then I'm going to go here and solve this and send this. That's it. Um, because that this particular session already knows Olama code and it also has got the other external knowledge. It'll be really interesting to see if it can create a new code or modify the existing install.sh script. It took about 50 seconds for it to create. Okay, it says, I agree that auto detect feature in the install sh script would be helpful. Here is a possible approach. It gives me this approach. Detect the init system. Check for this, this one if we check or check for open RC. OpenRC is exactly what this person has shown. So the, they have got OpenRC. So it says detect it and then give me and install Volama service file accordingly. And then you can install it. And then you have OpenRC integrated integration into install SH. So it says replace the existing init system specific install logic in the install SH file. So it tells us to do it. And if we go here and then we find the file, which is uh, the install SH scripts file, go file. You can see here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say replace it and give me the entire file. So I'm going to say replace it yourself and give me the new install.sh file. And I want to, the reason I'm asking this is I want to know whether it can actually fetch the install.sh file, make the changes in the right place it gave and then return us back. And um, that is very important because anybody can give this suggestion. The fact that it knows all these information, I think it makes it far superior if it can edit the code and give us back. We have got the updated code here. Uh, the updated code honestly like looks much smaller than what we have. So it doesn't look like probably it has got the code directly from here because it has probably missed a lot of parts. Maybe that is something that we should explicitly say go here and then get it, which is what the Devon team said. But I think it has done a decent job uh, with uh, Okay, identifying the init system here and then based on that giving the particular set of installation based on whatever init system that it has got. So at this point, uh, I just wanted to give you a glimpse of how to solve GitHub issues with AI and I think like it is extremely helpful that you have got an AI system that can understand the entire code base of your own project. So it can be a useful pair programmer and it can be helpful in solving GitHub issues or at least like you can have like the first line of support which is like the AI generated answer added automatically to the GitHub issue, which could solve the time of the developer who is maintaining an open source project. If you are interested in me checking out any other library, let me know in the comment section, but I'm super interested in trying Google Gemini 1.5 Pro for coding mode.